What's up, my vengeful spirits? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. All right, this story's called Homophobic Parents Made My Life Hell for Two Months, So I Gave Them a Taste of Their Own Medicine. Background. So back when I was 15, I had a father who we'll call Deadbeat Joe. Deadbeat Joe was the stereotypical deadbeat father as he almost never contacted me of his own volition and he resisted paying my mother child support whenever he could because he hated her as she left him and took his baby away from him, so he took it out on me. His words, not mine. My mother, being the saint that she was, never talked bad about him and tried to endorse a relationship between us throughout my entire childhood. I did love Deadbeat Joe and would often want to spend time with him, but to no avail, because he was always busy getting his Richard wet with some rather uh, questionable women. So I was basically forgotten about by him until the few occasions when he realized he remembered that he did have an older son. Because of that, I was raised by my mother and my stepfather, who I call dad. They really loved and still do love me, and they worked their asses off to make sure that I was well cared and provided for. Unfortunately, me and my family had to move away to another state when I was 12, which meant that my parents ended up buying a house which we moved into. Now, something to mention, up to this point, Point, we were very poor and my parents ended up buying a house after getting a great deal for it. However, the house was and is very poor quality and my parents didn't know that so we ended up basically getting scammed. My mother lost her job and over time we ended up becoming so poor that we ended up having to rely on food banks to supply us with the food necessary to survive. Luckily, or rather unluckily, Deadbeat Joe and his new wife, who we'll call Chris, said that they take me in and that they had a a good, decent quality of life, which my parents bought because, to my mother, Deadbeat Joe didn't really seem like the type of guy who would lie about something that big, so despite my objections, I hated Deadbeat Joe by this point, I went to go live with Deadbeat Joe and Chris plus their kids due to the fact that my real parents were about to lose our home at the time, and they didn't want me to be homeless along with them. At first, they were very welcoming, but after a few weeks, things started to change. Change. Both Chris and Deadbeat Joe had lied, and they were just as poor as my parents were. Over time, Chris had started to show the volatile side of herself, and Deadbeat Joe found out I was gay, which was a problem due to the fact that he was very Christian. <laughs> I mean, apparently not a very good Christian. <laughs> they both really hated how I was Lugabutta, despite claiming otherwise, as Deadbeat Joe felt that I needed mental help because he felt that being gay was an illness. They tried to force me to confirm to their beliefs that being gay was wrong, but I refused, which made them very angry. Chris also ended up just being horrible and manipulative to me on a regular basis, as she would do things like set up a schedule for when us kids could do certain things, refuse to let me go to school for no good reason, threaten to isolate me from her entire family if I didn't do what she wanted me to, etc. Due to all of this, it caused me a lot of stress and anxiety over the two months I stayed there, and I would cry a lot in the corner of my room, wishing that the fuses that kept breaking would set the house on fire and take me with it. Oy. It built up a lot of anger and resentment within me and all of the things that Chris and Deadbeat Joe would do and say to me. After a while, the hostility in the house built up and I would eventually be accused of being a kid diddler who wanted to diddle my brothers because Chris said that someone looked up child video of the adult variety, bad uh, vi variety, oh god, um, on her cell phone. Deadbeat Joe ended up taking away my phone and threatening me with knives, which culminated to me taking my phone back and running away to hide in the bushes outside of the trailer park we lived in. The cops came. My parents manipulated the situation to make it seem like I was a terrible child, and they left. 
The next week was a living hell afterwards as Chris and Deadbeat Joe kept trying to get a confession out of me and kept threatening me, but I held my ground and was able to leave their house and move back in with my parents. By this point, I was seething with rage, but I didn't do anything to them as I wanted to move on. However, a month after I left her house, I remembered the smug face Chris made throughout the week she kept me a prisoner in her house and kept trying to ruin my life. I decided that I hated her too much to not retaliate against her and her husband. So that's what I ended up doing. The revenge. I decided that I would sign Chris up for all the spam and junk mail I could find using the information I could find online and on the school directory of the school she worked at. Looking to hear the sacred word of Scientology? Click. Want to hear about our crappy products that will fall apart after one use? Click. Want to see some hot, sexy women get it on with each other? Click, click, click! Next, I decided to send Chris's family some recordings I took of some of the things that she would say to me. During my stay at Chris's house, I had recorded the things that she was saying to me, so I had evidence to show my parents that she was abusing me. I ended up sending those recordings to all of her close friends and family before blocking them. They were very bad, so it wouldn't have surprised me if some of them ended up distancing themselves from her after listening to it. Lastly, I decided that I would continue to make Deadbeat Joe pay my mother for what he owed her in child support. I was originally going to ask my real dad to adopt me, but after learning of how much money Deadbeat Joe had to send my mother, around $1,200 per month, whoa, that's like some people's entire income. I did the math and concluded out of spite that I would let my my mother keep on milking him for what he was worth until I turned 18. Okay, so I know I'm pretty sure alimony stops when uh, the person, when the lady gets married again, um, but does that work with child support too? Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be quite a bit of time before I become an adult too, as I currently am 16, so by the time I have turned 18, Deadbeat Joe will have to legally pay my mother $25,000 over the next few few years of my life, which is definitely not something to sniff at. Really? <laughs> Oh God, ah, you were right. Resolution, I never heard back from my evil parents after I carried out my revenge against them, so I don't really know how their immediate reaction towards what I done. However, after going back to the school directory to see if any changes were made to it, I discovered that almost all the teacher's info was scrubbed from the site and my stepmother's name was nowhere to be found. I connected the dots and it made me realize I had caused an entire site-wide change. And the reason why I'd never heard back from my abusive parents was because of how badly I had humiliated Chris and I knew that Chris would have flogged Deadbeat Joe if he dared try to talk to me again. After realizing this, I laughed so hard I almost pissed myself and I left the school's website. Currently, I am studying for an exam that will earn me a certification in an aspect of designing, which is important for the field I want to get into. I am taking my education seriously, and I now have opportunities that I wouldn't have been afforded had I stayed at Chris's house. I have made some new friends and have now moved on from the things that my parents did to me. Damn. First of all, OP, good job at staying strong. That could not have been a very nice environment to live in for even two months. And two months is not a short amount of time. Oh my gosh. Well, all I can say is, you know, I'm glad that you have parents that actually do love and appreciate you, as that is incredibly important, in case you couldn't tell. Um, so, yeah, I'm just... I'm happy for you, man. Good job. Alrighty, this story's called I Can't Be Hired Directly? You Don't Get My System. So, my backstory. It's crooked. I had scoliosis. <laughs> I'm joking. I didn't. It was... That's not part of the story, if you're just listening. I was doing something called a joke. Anyway, so my backstory. When I was about 20-ish, I worked for a company named for a fruit that didn't sell fruit. <gasps> is it... Is it Paraphone? Actually, I worked for a primary supplier for them who was doing the repair division in a new location. Cast. 
Myself? Me? I mean me. Supervisor. Lead. So, I started in a smaller position and quickly moved up to repair evaluations. Basically, if the thing worked when we got it but not after the repair, I need to find out why and correct it. Management had to manually search every device in an Excel sheet every day to find the devices I worked on. I took it on myself to design and implement an automatic system given I was a temp at the time. They extended my employment with the promise of a direct hire due to this design. It worked flawlessly for close to two years. Right around the time I was due to figure out if I was being brought up or not, Lead starts playing around and avoiding the situation. I contacted Lead multiple times a week for the next month with little to no reply. I spoke with the super after the Lead started ignoring me and not replying. I was getting desperate at this time to know whether I needed to look for for new work soon or if I would have a great job for the years to come. Finally, I had enough. I rebuilt the system I designed with a kill switch, so to speak, and hid it in the system. I emailed this new system to the managers asking lead and supervisor. They all like the new update and praise my ingenuity. I let them know that I was the only one who knew how to design and operate this, but would love to be brought up to permanent so I could train someone else if I were to take vacations or something of the like. This was ignored. Finally, my last week was here and I reminded lead and super I haven't been moved to permanent status. I don't have a replacement for this position to which I received the usual, it's not that hard. We know the system and anyone can do it. So my last day, they have me start building out my last report and to close out my email and file system. The kill switch was the part that was wiped in the device reset before I was allowed to collect my last check. This wipe is to ensure I haven't linked my provided computer to an outside source. I guess. Never quite knew exactly why. They wiped my computer, took my badge, and ensured I wasn't sneaking any devices out and wished me well. Fast forward a few days when Super calls me asking why the file system isn't working after I left. I reminded him that it was built on my company provided device and I hadn't been allowed to teach anyone else the system before I left. The silence as the wheels clicked in place was like hearing heaven itself. He immediately hung up and called back asking me to come back full time with benefits immediately. I had already taken a new job, interviewed the day before and accepted the position on the spot. The money was way better and was to start the next week. I told Super to shove I'm just kidding. His offer had to beat my new hourly rate and effective the next day or no dice. He never called back and from friends who will work there, that system has never been fixed and nobody can figure it out enough to reverse engineer it. That was close to 12 years ago now. I'm pretty proud of myself. You should be. That's like such a boss move and you are literally a temp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this story's called My Teacher Hated Me. She got suspended for it. I was in second, third grade at the time. My teacher, Mrs. Peters, rewarded us with cupcakes one Friday for good behavior. Well, I was the teacher's favorite target for several stupid reasons. The main reason was because I supposedly never paid attention in class. She probably hated me too. The evil old hag suddenly decided that I don't deserve any cupcakes knowing that I was looking forward to having one. Huh, what? That's, that's actually messed up, dude. She also knew that I was on my best behavior, but for whatever reason, she changed her mind at the last minute. She sent me away from the table where everyone seated and had me sit by the door. I cried my eyes out and she loved it. What is wrong with this woman? What? She was enjoying my suffering. She had encouraged all my classmates to look at the injustice she caused and they all laughed at me. She decided to be a uh, mean word, B, B word, uh, by purposely including cookies as a treat with those cupcakes. She made sure I watched everyone enjoy their undeserved goodies. 
while I sat there in misery. Anyway, she decided to be petty and punish me even more for being bullied by her. She didn't allow me to go to first recess. So I sat there hating my life and two classmates named Matthew and Jared decided to sneak back into class and each stole a cupcake before running back outside. By the time Mrs. Peters came back from her coffee pot, she noticed that two cupcakes were missing. Guess who she blamed? Your one and only. Okay, I mean, I'm not saying she did anything good here, but like, I mean, you were framed. You can't 100% blame her for thinking it was you, but she could have listened. She could have heard you out. Anyway, what did she do? She grabbed my face, impaled my skin with her filthy nails, and grabbed my tongue with her other hand and forced my mouth wide open. I called for help. I couldn't run. No one came to help. All because I was labeled as a problem child, so my cries were ignored. She finally let me go when she saw that there were obviously no signs of me eating any cupcakes at all. Not a single crumb. She decided to call my parents for my bad behavior. They picked me up. I told them what happened to me. They didn't believe me until they checked my face. Oh my. I don't remember what happened after that, but what I do remember is that Matthew and Jared got in trouble for the assault they caused. Caused. Thank you, Michael and J Matthew and Jared's parents. They were an emotional wreck for a long time. They didn't want to be near me. As for Mrs. Peters, she was gone for several months, and I only saw her during the last week of school. I don't know how she was disciplined for all the crap that she did to me. She was a different woman toward me. She was way too nice to me. Way too nice to everyone. I didn't trust her at all, and I never ever saw her again after that. That old hag might be already dead. Good riddance. Edits. Matthew and Jay, Garrett, Jared, had got me in trouble several times before because it was apparently funny how the teacher bullied me. They witnessed the teacher drag me into a timeout chair once. She didn't leave any marks. They weren't innocent at all. In fact, they laughed when the teacher laid her hands on me in separate incidences. Incidents. They didn't witness the said assault in the story. I just hope they know better now. Abuse is not fun. That's just severely messed up. Like, I can understand if it was middle schoolers. Like, ugh, those guys suck. I'm just kidding. They're like my prime customer base. They will buy so much oregano. I don't know why. I, they just, they just, I, I just carry it in little baggies. And they're like, and I'm like trying to sell it because oregano is good. And they're like, oh, what's them? And it's good oregano. So I sell them like, like a few grams of oregano for like 30 bucks. Dude, the profit margins are insane. So I can't trash talk middle schoolers too much. Um, they, seem to have a passion. Uh, every middle schooler seems to have a shared passion for um, uh, Italian seasonings. So, you know. But anyway, OP, I am so sorry I had to go through that. Um, and I hope you don't hold it against every other teacher because, as you know, teachers are great. I mean, you, I hope you have learned and se seen that after this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Moving on. Wait, no, that's the last story. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.